how many what's like the average number of data centers these these big players have like in the united states do, do you know what i off the top of my head i don't know but it's not in the what they tend to do they're not building thousands of them right around all locations what they're looking to do is build they're big so if you look at an amazon an aws data center if you, you can go online you can have a look at it you can see virtual tours etc they are football football stadium after football stadium next to each other you know lay them out these are huge huge um buildings and what is the and actual on, hardware is it like it's it's servers what, what like yeah, I... it's still racks of, of of equipment it's still racks of computing power it's just instead of you having it in your office it's there and you don't have to maintain the power to it right you don't have to maintain the the, the equipment so, you know, the days when I, I started in this is, is computing world, you'd have a server in your office for your email server. You'd have another server for where you hung all the printers off it. You'd have another server, which was your database server, and you'd buy the kit and you'd then put power into it. You'd then buy uh, an, a UPS next to it in case the mains power went to keep the thing running. And, and, and then if the motherboard or something went wrong in that server, guess what? you'd be in, un, unscrewing it and putting the hardware in and, and fixing bits. All of that now is it's not your problem, right? And the beauty of doing it in the cloud is if a bit of hardware fails, you just keep running. You don't see it because they've built failover. They've built resilience into this. They've got all these racks of equipment and the applications don't run on one CPU that if that fails, oh, we have to wait six hours while someone ships a new one in or two days doesn't matter that it's all architected to be failover the whole the whole point should be you always have access from anywhere anytime on any device we take it for granted now but it didn't used to be that right so now if you'll take facebook go on facebook on your pc go on facebook on your mac go on facebook on your phone go on facebook on your tablet and it all adapts itself to whatever device you're on and you can go on it 24 7 and the majority of the time, there's always blips on anything, right? But if you think about over a year, it's very rare that any core application you want to access today isn't available to you. Mm -hmm. You go back 20 years, there would be times when for a day or two, you didn't have access to whatever the application was. It wasn't a, If something failed in that server and the bit of kit was ordered, you'd have a techie telling you, yeah, we should, we, you should be able to access it by Friday. The kit's coming in on Thursday and then I need a few time to overnight do this with it. And then you can, what? But that was the world. Now, if you've got offline, if you're offline on, on some application, you know, what, what's your social media go, you know, go mad. Watch Twitter. Oh my God, Instagram's been down for 10 minutes. What the hell's going on? I can't survive. Mm -hmm. Because the expectation level is, always available anytime anywhere any device what's the cooling process like at these data centers well yeah that's what i was going to say if you look at the locations where a lot of these data centers go it's a good question is that that's one of the biggest issues right is the power um and, and how they keep them cool and all the rest of it and temperate you know because that, that that affects the resilience so if you look at where a lot of them are built guess what they're, they're built by rivers you look at, for, the, for the power and the water power, et cetera. So go and look at Amazon. There's lots of them built, uh, you know, on the Mississippi and things like this. There's, there's lots of data centers built in cold countries. You know, the Nordics region, there are data centers that are built near glaciers, et cetera, because they can use natural cooling, which makes it more green, more efficient, et cetera, because the big problem, uh, two biggies are, A, they need an immense amount of power, and B, they need an immense amount of cooling. You can't you can't run these things. They're air. They've got to be run air conditioned, which again needs power. So the, there's a lot of smart decisions made about where they build them. It isn't just you don't you try not to build them in the middle of a hot area where you've got to drive power to it. If you can build them on a river and use water flow as power and use cool, clever cooling techniques, so that there's a lot of uh, clever engineering goes on around how you build and operate these things with a, a, the maximum efficiency you can. We can get into your, your personal branding and, and what your advice for that in, in a second. But I want to ask you one question. Is it, any of this hardware that, you know, AWS, Azure, Google, can that eventually not be physical? 
will it eventually have huge data centers that are not locally stored in physical places? Well, it, well it's got to run on something, right? It it, it can't it can't can't run like uh, the Matrix film in, in, in imagination. It's got to run on <laughs> server somewhere. So, um, what what is happening though in the, in the technology industry in general is compute CPU power and, and and you know the CPUs are becoming more powerful all the time and new quantum computing and new ways of doing it so you can get more power out of smaller devices and we've seen that think of the phone work market right look at your phone today and look at a mobile phone when they you know even 10 years ago they've got smaller and smaller in device you know your your, your smart watches your smart devices you know your google glass the the the, the rumored apple gla apple glasses that are coming out etc they're able to get more computing power in smaller devices and and cool them and and do clever things with them you know the big the big challenge we've all got is um battery power right it, we know that with electric cars is coming up with it they, they, that's the biggest evolution i think would change the technology sector as we see it is a new battery technology you know that, that lasts longer that's the thing we're all struggling with and they're all trying to figure out how do they engineer how do they reinvent battery technology that stores power for longer more effectively and that's the big challenge we, we've all got it right we all plug in our phones our watches and a lot of people their cars now um, if they can elongate the length of charge that we can get from that that will change so much that we can, we're capable of doing 